Welcome to Futurescape, where we explore inspiring futures and possibilities. The fear of job loss from robots or automation has been prevailing for many decades and is an easy argument to make, but it's not the full story. In fact, it's too simple an argument to make and at best it is misleading. Fear also spreads more easily than hope, which is why simplistic arguments that stoke fear are so dangerous. The harder argument to make is that new jobs will be created in entirely new industries not yet imagined. It takes hard work and real effort to contemplate or imagine the unimagined. In order to tackle this question, I have organized this video into three parts. In part one, we will take a quick look at the technological changes associated with all the three major industrial revolutions. Next, we will look at some real data that spans over 70 years, starting in the 1950s, that relate to changes in the unemployment rate, population growth and the labour force. And in part three, we will try to glean the road ahead based on evidence from the past industrial revolutions and most importantly, what needs to be done in order to manage the sector or industry specific job losses from further automation and artificial intelligence in the future. Before exploring the future, it is good to remind ourselves of the technological transitions and societal transformations we experienced over the past 200 odd years, where there was increased automation and even more population growth globally. Here's what the population chart looks like going back to the year 1700. It took all of humanity to reach 1 billion people in the year 1800. And in just over 220 years, we have added an additional seven times that amount to cross 8 billion humans just a few months ago, on November 15th, 2022. And the unemployment rate in many advanced economies, such as the United States, Canada, and so on, with the highest levels of automation and utilization of advanced technologies, is at an all-time low. Now let's just allow that to sink in for a moment and let's put a pin on that. This shows the timelines of all the major industrial revolutions over the past 200 years. And to summarize quickly, during this time we saw the rise and fall of major technical regimes. The rise of machines and mechanical devices such as the power loom and the steam engine in the first industrial revolution greatly increased the efficiency of manufacturing and the production of goods on a much larger scale than was previously possible. The widespread use of electricity, the development of the internal combustion engine and the invention of the telephone and the telegraph during the second industrial revolution. And starting in the 1960s and 70s with the emergence of transistor technology and the semiconductor industry, the third industrial revolution is characterized by the development of digital electronics personal computers and robotics, and the rise of the Internet and the Internet of Things. All of these technological advancements have transformed the way goods are produced, services are delivered, and how people live, work and communicate. The widespread use of computers, the Internet and mobile devices have greatly increased efficiency and productivity, while the integration of advanced machines and robotics has automated many tasks previously performed by humans. However, across the world and throughout each industrial revolution, we found new ways to use the time we gained from the increased productivity and efficiency and we transitioned into new vocations, enterprises and industries that were previously inconceivable or unimagined. And just for fun, Here's what Bill Gates, a key architect of the Third Industrial Revolution, talking to the average human represented by none other than the talk show host David Letterman, a well-known TV personality of the 90s. This brief segment is rather interesting as their conversation touches on technologies from all three of the four industrial revolutions. The brand new technology of the mid-90s, are you ready for this? called the Internet, the technologies of radio tape recorder from the first half of the 20th century, and not knowing what to call it, Bill Gates makes reference and alludes to technologies of today, now known as social media and streaming technologies. 
It is interesting, to say the least, how just 27 years can sound like ancient history or like the Stone Age to many born in the late 90s or after. What about this internet thing? Do you, do you know anything about that? Sure. <laughs> what, what the hell is that exactly? Well, it's, it's become a place where people are publishing information. Right. So you, everybody can have their own home page. Companies are there, the latest information. It's wild what's going on. You can send electronic mail to people. Uh, it is the big new thing. Yeah, but you know, uh, it's easy to criticize something you don't fully understand, which is my position here. Go ahead. But I, I can remember a couple of months ago, there was like a big breakthrough announcement <laughs> that on the internet or on some computer deal, they were going to broadcast a, a baseball game. You could listen to a baseball game on your computer. And I just thought to myself, does radio ring a bell? <laughs> You know what I mean? Just... There's, there's a difference. There is a difference. It's not a huge difference. What is the uh, difference? But you can, you can listen to the baseball game whenever you want, All right. too. Oh, I see. So it's stored in one of your memory deals. Exactly. And then you can That's come back the way a year I'm later. thinking we talked yeah, about earlier. Yeah, yeah. Do tape recorders ring a bell? <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, I just, I just don't know. What, what can you, just knowing me, the little you know me now, what, how, what am I missing here? What do I need? Well, if you want to learn about the latest cigars or uh, auto racing right. uh, statistics. Well, you know, or, I don't know, I've got that covered. I, I subscribe to two British magazines devoted entirely to motorsports, and I call the Quaker State Speedline about two times a half hour. <laughs> so now, now, would the computer give me more than I'm getting that way? Oh, you can find other people who have the same unusual interests you do. Uh, and... <laughs> <laughs> you mean... <laughs> You mean the troubled loner chat room on the internet? <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> in part two, we will focus on the more recent history starting in the 1950s to understand the changes in the unemployment rate, population growth and the labor force due to the continuation and advancements in automation and digitization. Let's first take a look at the past 40 years since the 1980s and the shift in which companies and industries dominated the list of the top 10 largest companies in the world. In the upcoming short video, you will see some major tectonic shifts happening in the top 10 due to technological change and a shift in dominance across different emerging industries throughout the decades. Take a seat back and enjoy this time-lapse video starting in 1990 or just before the dawn of the internet era. After all that change and transition into the digital era, in the United States, Canada, and in many industrialized nations, the unemployment rate today is at an all-time low, at 3.4% with over 5 million open and unfilled jobs in the United States alone. And the situation has been getting worse over the past 20 years. There are just not enough humans to fill this vacuum of jobs open today. The COVID pandemic, the Great Resignation, and many other personal and socioeconomic factors may have exacerbated an already bad employment gap, at least in North America or in the Western world. This chart shows that over 70 years, including the Third Industrial Revolution, 
the labor force in the United States tripled from 50 odd million to almost 160 million. While at the same time, it is worth noting that the population in the United States only grew from about 160 to 320 million, effectively only doubling in that time frame. In other words, despite entering the third industrial revolution with digitization, personal computing, the internet, mobile technologies and social media, there is no real increase in unemployment whatsoever due to automation or technological change, but in fact, just the opposite. I am by no means implying that there will not be any job losses. Certain workers, both low and high skilled, will lose their jobs. And as a society, we will need to figure out how to support these impacted workers through reskilling and upskilling. This is the responsibility of every government body, education, and vocational institution around the world. Some countries have experimented with the idea of a universal basic income, which should also be part of the discussion and potential solution space. But in spite of any localized or specific job losses, the net result to society based on the evidence over the past 200 years and three major industrial revolutions is that there will likely be yet inconceivable and unimagined opportunities for work and a shift in the makeup or composition of industries and workers over time. The fear that is aroused by simplistic notions about machines replacing humans is based on what economists call the lump of labor fallacy, which assumes that there is only a fixed amount of work for everyone or labor that is needed in an economy. If this were true, we would not see record low unemployment levels or surplus jobs today in the most advanced economies in the world. Such fallacies completely ignore employment nurseries or the job creation effect due to new and yet inconceivable service areas. If you have any doubt, just think of all the new service areas and jobs created today from social media, which sprung out of thin air and was unimaginable just 20 years ago. If these social media companies were humans, they would still all be teenagers, with the exception of LinkedIn which just turned 20 last year. As discussed above, despite making the case that there will likely be no net job loss from automation or artificial intelligence, there is much to be done by society. In part three, we will take a look back and examine what some observers said in the past regarding automation and job loss, and the challenge and the road ahead for society writ large. The Industrial Revolutions brought not only technological change across industries, but institutional and political change over many decades, such as the spread of democracy, development of social safety nets, fairer taxation, and the establishment of trade unions. Despite these developments, a lot more needs to be done in order to reduce inequality and spread the wealth generation from ongoing and future Industrial Revolutions in a more equitable manner. Professor Klaus Schwab, founder and executive chairman of the World Economic Forum in his book The Fourth Industrial Revolution, cautions leaders and citizens that inequalities could grow rather than shrink if things are not managed properly. He says, My concern is that decision makers are too often caught in traditional, linear and non-disruptive thinking or too absorbed by immediate concerns to think strategically about the forces of disruption and innovation shaping our future. The fears of automation while exaggerated on an aggregated basis, certain industries and population segments are likely to be impacted disproportionately, as discussed earlier. According to Rick Wardsman of the Politico magazine, the 50s magazine The Nation said that automation is a ghost which frightens every worker in every plant, the more so because he sees no immediate chance of exercising it. And Science Service, a non-profit institution, remarked that with the advent of the thinking machine, people are beginning to understand how horses felt when Ford invented the Model T. The University of Chicago economist Yale Brosen calculated that 13 million jobs were destroyed in the 1950s, while another 20 million were created 
due to automation and technological change. While on aggregate, 7 million more were created, the impact on workers in the steel industries and rail companies was particularly hard, and the impacts on their lives and livelihoods were real. Similar employment dislocations or localized destruction of work are likely to happen again. The responsibility lies upon all responsible members of government, businesses and civic society. If history is any indication, as we've discussed above, the silver lining is that on the aggregate, disruptive technologies such as artificial intelligence, robotics and associated technologies will create new industries, service areas and jobs. To quote General Electric, a major employer of humans and machines in the 1950s, machines that can read, write, do arithmetic, measure, feel, remember, now make it possible to take the load off men's minds. Just as machines have eased the burden on our backs, but these fantastic machines still depend on people to design and build and guide and use them. What they replace is drudgery, not people. In short, after three industrial revolutions and 250 years of technological change, efficiency and labor productivity gains, and an eightfold increase in population, we find ourselves today in a world of labor shortages and extremely low unemployment rates in many advanced economies, with new jobs that were inconceivable just 20 years ago. If the past almost three centuries have taught us anything, it's that we're not very good at imagining the jobs of the future, that we need to improve public and private sector support for those impacted by sector and industry specific job losses through reskilling and upskilling, and that we grossly underestimate the new vocations and employment opportunities right ahead of us. So that's it, folks, for this episode of Futurescape. Thanks for watching, and if you got value, please like and subscribe, and feel free to comment below. Until next time, be safe and be well.